Hello, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew Barksdale. I'm a career advisor in the Carroll School of Management. I'm joined here uh, tonight by Jabril Robinson as well. He works at the Career Center, and we're really excited to present to you tonight the Advancing uh, Black, Latinx, Native American uh, Talent with SEO Careers, MLT, and soon-to-be inroads. Um, so thank you guys for joining. I'm really excited for this evening to kind of just, you know, debunk some of these programs and hear more about them. Um, and, you know, I'm joined right now by Sabrina and James from, Sabrina from SEO and James from MLT. And without further ado, I'll really start the, start the evening off by just getting a quick introduction uh, to both of them. So Sabrina, you can start. Everybody. So nice to meet you. I'm Sabrina Ramirez Slade, Assistant Director with SEO. Um, so our program really focuses on helping students to get ready for the interview cycle as well as internships with top firms. Um, I've been working with SEO for the last five years and really my background is all about finding opportunities and giving opportunities to folks of color. So that's been a lot of fun for me. And uh, Drew, did you want us to talk more like introductions about ourselves or to talk more about the program? Uh, just introductions of yourself right now. We'll dig deeper into the programs in a moment. All right, cool. I didn't want to go too far. James, how about yourself? Oh, I was going to let John go for the SEO. Oh, John, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot John was here. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I um. My name is John Williams. I just started with SEO back in, in February. Uh, so it's, it's only been a month, but it feels like it's already been a journey. And I'm a campus recruiting manager and I, I work uh, along with my fearless leader, Sabrina, here. So I will be a fly on the wall today. Um, and then I'm James Colton. I'm one of the directors of career prep recruitment and missions at MLT. I've been with MLT for um, about seven, seven and a half years now. And um, my background is um, nonprofits and uh, um, originally came to DC to do um, kind of public policy type things, but then um, ended up in this world. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, really great to have all you guys. Really appreciate the support you're giving the BC and hope, hopefully we can find some good students for you as well. Um, hopefully we will get inroads in here eventually with Lisa Loritz. Uh, she's just having some technical difficulties. So if she joins later in the conversation, I'll make sure just to call her out and have her introduce herself. Um, but without further ado, I, I think we can really jump into the, this program and, and guys, as the students, it's a very small, intimate session. So feel free to um, take your camera, or take your videos off and join in on the conversation. It would really be awesome. Um, and we'll get going. So. Sabrina, for you first, could you give a, a deeper dive introduction to your organizations? I know you maybe prepared some slides, but you know, really want to get the overview of SEO careers, some of the missions, goals, and values um, that you yeah, have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do I have the ability to share my screen? You do now. All right, perfect. So let me do that. All right, so can you guys see that okay? Let me just uh, make it bigger. Right. Okay, so the first up, uh, just to, I'll leave it on this slide for a second. So you'll see that QR code. So for the students on, feel free to put your phone up to it and it'll take you to a quick form just to fill out some data points for us so I can stalk you later now, seriously, just uh, follow up about the application. But, you know, for those of you on the phone, you know, the SEO program, and you're definitely going to hear a lot of similarities between MLT and also inroads. But the whole premise of the program is to recruit Black, Latinx, and Native American students and really get you ready for opportunities with top firms. Um, and, you know, I'll go into obviously more details about that. Hopefully everybody got to uh, click on the form there. So it's a free program. We are based out of the New York area, but we do recruit across the country. So really any student at you know, a four-year school that identifies as Black, Latinx, Native American would qualify for SEO. And so you know, this program started back in the civil rights era really to be a way of kind of providing folks really in a, a small community in New York with mentorship opportunities. 
and it grew into a program with several other arms. But the one that we're talking about today is SEO Career. And again, we focus on recruiting college-age students for internships. And we do that through, you know, it, we say virtual and in-person. Obviously, everything now is virtual. Um, so you get access to different courses within the Blackboard platform. You get a dedicated coach, uh, mock interview prep, and then we have an alumni network, which is over 8,000 strong at this particular juncture. Now, there are a couple of phases to it. It's pretty easy in terms of applications. You only have to apply once. You can find that really easily by just Googling SEO career application. The application takes about five minutes to fill out. And then from there, if you meet the basic criteria for the program, which I will go over towards the end, you will be get you will get the chance to do a phone screen, right? And so phone screen is really important because that's going to determine whether or not you get into the program. So the phone screen is really about having a great story or elevator pitch, being able to kind of demonstrate interest in a particular role. Um, so I will tell you, because I know, you know, there could be some students on that maybe are more interested in kind of the sciences. It is really about students that want to do something either in a corporate environment or a banking environment. And so once you have that phone screen, besides the fact that you have to have a great elevator pitch, it's also that you know something about the industry, right? We want to know that you're keeping, uh, you know, up to date with what's happening in the business world, whether it's that you're, you know, reading the Wall Street Journal or maybe, um, you know, reviewing some type of online source. And then lastly, that you are familiar with kind of the technical aspect of the particular role that you're interested in, right? So for someone who wants to do banking, it might be valuation techniques. So it really just depends on, you know, what you've selected when you apply. So once you get through the phone screen, um, if you get a passing score for that, then you are now a part of the program. So the first part of the program is SEO Edge, which you see there. And that's all about getting you ready for an interview with one of the partners. So again, that's done through, you know, giving you some assignments within Blackboard, partnering with the coach and then having tons of mock interviews as well. And so, you know, this is the part that is a little bit sometimes hard to explain because everybody's journey is a little bit different, right? You can apply to SEO when you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior. So when you apply and what you're interested in and what your GPA is all kind of, um, you know, will determine exactly where that journey is going to go. So for Edge, once you get to the point where your coach thinks that you are kind of, you know, partner access ready is what we call it, meaning that you're ready uh, to have your resume shared with partners, you will then start to interview with different partners. And you do have some say so in that, right? So you can share with your coach, you know, the partners that you might be interested in. Of course, we can never guarantee that particular partner, uh, but it, you do have some say so. Once the kind of interviews over, ideally you get the offer, you are now a part of success. So success are really the students who now have an offer and who will begin an internship that following summer. So again, you continue to work with the coach, it's usually a different coach, and now along with the other students who've gained internships, you're now you know, working with them in group sessions and getting ready for the internship. And then it all culminates with our summit, which is every May. These are actually some photos from the last time we did it in person, which is kind of sad, but you know, we hope again at some point to do it in person. But the general lowdown on the summit is it's two weeks in May and usually starts with a welcome event. You get to hear from um, SEO leadership, but I'd say most of it is the technical training and partner events that you see there. So it's mostly in you in front of your computer, your laptop, doing different exercises led by instructors. The other really great thing about the summit is getting to hear from industry types, right? And that is probably the best word for it, right? You hear from Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan, who is uh, pictured uh, right there on the screen, Henry Kravitz of KKR Credit, um, you know, also Carla Harris from Morgan Stanley. So it's a pretty neat 
um, thing to be sitting at your laptop and have these folks share their words of wisdom. And then we did, even though it was virtual, we did actually have a party as well, which was kind of fun. So these are the partners. Um, you know, at this point, you know, COVID and Black Lives Matter and all the stuff that was going on, I will tell you that something really great came out of that for SEO in that we've doubled our partners. We have over 200 partners now. Um, and also we've almost doubled our class size, right? So last year we had about 400 interns and now it's over 700. So tremendous growth. It's been really exciting. And, you know, as you can see, many companies that I'm sure you guys are familiar with. And again, you'll definitely see some overlap with both inroads and MLT. We do share some of the same partners. So these are the big buckets, right? So as I said, mainly corporate and banking. So it's real estate, it's technology, corporate services, you know, that's going to be finance and accounting, marketing, and then of course, financial services, which is the bucket that we're probably uh, most well known for. But these days we actually now have, you know, when you kind of put real estate technology and corporate services together, we have kind of just as many of those along with the banking roles. So it is very specific in terms of what we're providing, but these again are, you know, the functions that we uh, support. So these are kind of high level qualifications that you have at least the 3.2. You can be at this point in the year, I'll be honest, we are specifically recruiting freshmen and sophomores. We already have, and, and I'm sure everybody uh, on the call knows this, you know, the banks are notorious for going early. So we are looking for freshmen and sophomores for banking roles, as well as real estate. Students must identify as Black, Latinx, or Native American to qualify any, you know, student out of four-year school, all majors. And then for international students, you would, um, you know, the only opportunity for you to be involved with the program is if you were to get an internship on your own, and then potentially we might be able to offer you training in that phase two, which is success. And again, super easy to find our application online. And then I mentioned earlier that we are currently looking for freshmen and sophomores for both real estate and banking. So that's my high level overview, and I'll toss it over to you. And James, before you go, I'll just introduce yeah. uh, Lisa's here. So I just want to introduce Lisa from Inroads. If Lisa, you want to unmute yourself and uh, just introduce yourself to everybody, and then we can uh, go with James. Yeah, there. Santa, you're on mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good evening, all. I am Lisa Lawrence. I'm a member of the National Talent Management Team with inroads i'm extremely extremely happy to be here this evening because i don't know if drew told you i did a stint at boston college some years back so i am excited to have a chance to share some information about inroads and uh, we'll tell you more about what we're doing and where we sit in the space when that time comes thank you great i guess i'll go i'll go uh through mlt quickly um let me share my screen. Um, so again, my name is James Colton. I'm one of the directors of career prep recruitment and missions at MLT. Um, quickly about MLT, similar to SEO and inroads, we are um, uh, a national nonprofit working um, with um, historically excluded um, talent. Um, and so we've been around for 15 years, um, have about 8,000 alumni and over 100 corporate partners. Um, and so to understand our theory of change a little bit, um, Again, you know, I've got a, a policy nonprofit background, so I think a lot in, um, in these kinds of systems. Um, first is economic mobility for individuals. So we have a lot of programs that are focused at the individual level, helping obviously individuals um, be successful in their careers. Um, and so we have you know, great success with our career prep program. A lot of them, uh, almost 100% are landing full-time jobs before they graduate. Um, this is gonna lead to representative leadership in, um, in corporate America more broadly. Um, and then from this, we also get diverse institutions. Uh, not advancing. Um, all right, here's our corporate partners. So we work with a lot of companies across a lot of different industries. So you see a lot of overlap with some of uh, some of the banks. 
um, MLT, we work with a lot of uh, consulting firms. We work with a lot of companies out in um, in tech, um, CPG marketing, um, and uh, and again, it's a it's a growing um, growing partner list as well. Um, I think some some companies that just came on, at least in the past year, were um, uh, Apple, Warner Media, Workday. Um, I don't think. I think Pfizer might have come on in 2019, um, but again, you know, they're just in the news with um, all the vaccines recently. Um, and so, when um, we partner with companies, they're usually coming to partner with us um, at one of with one of our um, programs, or they're working with us um, through our employer playbook or for kind of engagement um, in, in this retention and advancement space. So with our career prep program, this is for college students. This is, we're working with about hundred students per cohort. We also have an ascend program, which is for uh, specifically first gen and low income students. And this is really focused on persistence. Um, and then we have some programs further along that are focused on helping you get into a top business school. So um, maybe if you didn't um, get the chance to apply to MLT um, during college, you can still apply to MLT maybe a couple of years out of undergrad um, if you're going back for a full-time MBA. Um, and then we have also, uh, you know, we have fellows in their 30s, 40s, 50s who are participating in some of our career advancement programs and senior leadership fellowships. Um, and the goal of MLT is still executive leadership. Um, now I'm going to kind of, I'm going to flip this around. Um, and so hopefully going to show you why, um, why programs like MLT inroads and SEO are really crucial right now. Um, so See this we we flipped around um, and so when you think about the people who get promoted into these c-suite or executive leadership positions they aren't just plucked out of thin air they're already identified as top performers in their companies um, and they also have high visibility and sponsorship and so those pieces are really important once you're a little bit later in your career um, to get to that point um, professionals really need the business skills to be top performers meaning that they have um, they've built skills from their business school uh, experience onward. Um, they've been able to network. They've had different experiences. You look at someone like Roz Brewer, um, Rosalind Brewer, who's the new CEO over at Walgreens, and she spent a number of years um, at, uh, I think, it was Starbucks and Kimberly Clark. Um, and again, it's all these experiences have culminated in, um, in, in a CEO role at um, a really huge um you know, national company. Um, but that, then to get all the skills you need to be top performers, you really need the top MBA and a network to get you there. And so this is why we have an MBA prep program. This is why we have an MBA professional development program um, to make sure that um, really young professionals are being able to get into some of these top business school programs. Um, MLT was founded actually by our CEO while he was, well, the business concept came while he was at Harvard Business School. Um, and uh, he was one of the few black students there, meaning that um, it was this, you know, this is supposed to be a, a career transforming experience, um, and it's still a barrier um, for too many people in the country. Um, and then to get into a top MBA program, you really need to get a fast track job after college. And what we mean by that is that there are certain jobs that um, will set you up better for business school success, or they'll be more competitive in the business school process. And so when we talk about some of these fast track jobs, um, and experiences, this is what we mean, is that it's going to kind of be a catalyst for a lot of these other experiences throughout your career. Um, and so as MLT is working on a lot of programs for individuals, we're also trying to do a lot of um, thought leadership around racism in the workplace. And so we've, um, different members of our staff have put um, pieces in The Atlantic and Forbes and Wall Street Journal um, kind of over the past year, um, understanding that we, we have to move the needle not um, not just among like the people who are doing the hiring, but really everyone who's in corporate America. Um, so uh, I think one of the things that uh, Drew wanted us to talk about was what support is provided to students or to fellows. And so um, MLT, we use, um, we, we like sports analogies. So um, uh, bear with me, it's March Madness. Um, uh, I've got coach Gino and um, coach Mike here from UConn and Duke, even though um, I've got a lot to say about that UConn-Baylor game, but um, this is not the time or place for that. Um, but 
what you have is that you have really excellent coaches who push their teams to be really excellent in what they do. Um, and MLT looks at coaching the same way in that, you know, we have coaches who prepare students to be high performers in what they're going to do next. And so what our playbook is, is really three pieces. First, it's personal clarity. So understanding that um, you have to know really what game you wanna play, um, or you have to understand what game is being played um, in order to be successful. You have to know the rules. Um, you know, you have to know what's required of you at every stage. Um, and that, that gets into knowing the bar. So once you understand what's required of you when you apply, when you interview, when you're on the job, then you have a better chance of actually exceeding the bar. Um, and then once you know what it takes to exceed the bar, then we can work on building out a roadmap to exceed the bar and to be identified as a top performer so you can get the offer after, uh, well, um, during the internship or um, before you graduate. And this is again supported through one-on-one um, -on -one coaching and MLT's network. So what, what's kind of involved then in this, this roadmap or, or the program are monthly assignments. So this is, about an hour a week where working through different modules um, and program deliverables. We have uh, a lot of different events right now. Um, there are three mandatory seminars, which include, there's a kickoff, which typically happens uh, summer of before junior year. There's an interview and analytical skills seminar, which is pretty much exactly what that sounds like. And that's mid junior year. And then we have a closing seminar, which um, is sort of after your um, uh, beginning of your senior year, really. We have a number of um, different boot camp options, and this is at the beginning of the program, so really before kickoff. And this is meant to help you um, explore different industries, get a sense of what, what's actually going on. Sometimes students come to us and say, I want to do consulting, but they don't actually know all the things that go on in the consulting industry. Um, and, and so maybe we can um, hopefully help demystify that a little bit so that as someone goes through the program, they know what are the skills or competencies that they're, they're trying to build towards. Um, over here on the right side, we require fellows to at least apply to two partners during the program, but you're not required to accept an offer in, in order to receive coaching or, or the program. And then we just want fellows to complete surveys so that we have the best data to make the program the best it can be. Um, and so this is an 18 month program It's typically completed between mid sophomore year and the end of senior year. And so it's, it's, uh, it's a fixed duration, meaning that you're going through the program with um, people who are the same age, who are, who are graduating on the same timeline that you're gr going to graduate. Um, yeah. Um, I think I've got just two more slides here. Um, so to be eligible, um, I think the, the only thing I'll kind of talk about here is that the graduation timeline for this next class is you have to graduate between December 2023 or spring, summer 2024. I know this is typically um, a freshman at this point, but you could be a sophomore who's staying maybe a extra semester. Um, and then also what we're, we're looking for people who are going to um, kind of go down, I don't know, I guess corporate um, careers is the best term. Um, students who are interested in med school or law school or nursing, physical therapy, um, astronomy, or I guess whatever, um, an astronaut um, path would not be eligible because that's not really going to fit with the curriculum that we're delivering. We don't have a minimum GPA requirement. We've accepted people below a 3.0 this year, but you should plan to maintain a 3.0 or better for the duration of um, your college career while in the program. And then you also don't have to be a business major. So I know we're, we're talking, I think, I'm sure you're all business majors um, if Drew invited you, but um, you don't have to be a business major if you decide to switch as well. Um, and so how to apply? Um, I think the easiest way right now, since the application won't open until the summer, is that you go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, and then you can get an application alert for when the application opens this summer. Um, if you, uh, maybe if you're a sophomore right now and this is something that is of interest to you, you can email me. Um, any of you can email me with questions for the career prep program, for our MBA prep program, um, or, or anything else that comes up. So yeah, thanks for letting me be here. I'll turn it over to Lisa now. Thanks, James. Am I up? I could keep it brief and say ditto. However, <laughs> um, there's so much overlap. Let me um, bring up my, um, my deck. 
I actually don't love using a deck, but I will do that because, you know, peer pressure. And not from this time, from a, a program I did earlier that um, I really felt conspicuous when I didn't have it out. Of course, now the data won't let me do anything. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you. Can you see anything on the screen? No. All right. If now I am going to apologize both for my tardiness um, and some tech challenges that I've been experiencing. Um, we had a data migration that has- um, We can them. see now. So, okay, all right. So let me see if I can get this document to open up the way I want it to. Um, nope. <laughs> this is really unfortunate um, and embarrassing. I don't like being embarrassed. I just thought I'd say that. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that I am Lisa Lawrence. I um, am sure you don't want to dial things on my phone, so I apologize for that. Um, we have had a data migration that has um, wreaked some havoc, if you will. So I apologize for the tech challenges. Um, and I couldn't get into the Zoom link because um, the shift here uh, meant that Zoom didn't recognize me. But let me get on to the issues at hand. Inroads has just celebrated 50 years of training and developing underserved youth. We are extremely proud about that. We had a marvelous, marvelous um, event in November where we had lots of alumni and former staff and champions and advocates who joined us and had some absolutely magnificent um, both addresses and workshops that were offered during that event. We are extremely pleased um, to be um, situated and positioned where we are. We have a lengthy history of working with thousands of interns. I am not gonna go through and read everything. I will tell you that Frank Carr attended Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, was incredibly inspired was moved to act, stepped away from his executive level position, spent several years shepherding and marshalling resources and was able to launch Inroads in 1970. At the time we were working with all high school students over the decades we have evolved up to college youth and then now are doing a mixed group of both college and high school students. We do expect to place some 600 and actually it's closer to 700 interns each summer in paid internships with over 200 partners. We have wonderful opportunities on the table and we have great support from both our longer term as well as our newer partners. We too have benefited from the social injustice movement. Um, I took some slides out of this earlier today, but I left this one uh, in hopes that some of you will go to inruns.org slash sign in and um, enter your information so that we have a record that you were here today. I will have other ways of finding you. So one way or another, there will be some connection. Um, but if you're able, go ahead and do that sign in sheet for us. Inroads is about leadership development. We have been leadership development. Our training and development historically and currently has been oriented in that arena. Our leadership development academy essentially starts to operate from the time a candidate applies. We have several steps in the process, but candidates are started off with a candidate prep session. From that, they move into a resume review. They do a mock interview. They hopefully will pursue opportunities with X number of partners and will be extremely successful in securing one of those options and will move into our professional development that is ongoing for undergraduate interns as long as they are a part of our organization. We are largely STEM and business, but not exclusively. And you'll see there's a list of other um, programs and options that have um, been on the table and in a couple of cases are still on our table. We are looking at some situations where some of the partners 
are interested in liberal arts kinds of background from students, um, but frequently are looking at situations where they're really looking for STEM candidates. We have a huge partnership with United Health Group, for instance, and UHG has options ranging from accounting to and through IT in multiple locations around the country and lots and lots of opportunities for development there. I mentioned four steps. I'm not going to detail those now, um, partly because I just walked through them very quickly. Uh, but I did want to emphasize these pillars, the training, opportunity, access, support, and network. And again, we start with training on the front end with our candidates. We are interested in making them aware of opportunities that our partners have available. Access has been a forever underpinning and will never go away. We have ongoing support with interns in that they have a program manager and the interns work with that program manager throughout that internship experience. The program managers are very, very good at helping interns put together self-development plans so that when they come to either a new intern orientation or a returning intern orientation, they can more than adequately take advantage of the training workshops that will be presented during those events. And we have a huge network. You saw that we have 28,000 alumni. I have occasionally told a candidate who was really curious about particular industries, go to LinkedIn, start with En-ROADS, do a search for En-ROADS and then put in a couple of other keywords and you will find people who will come up and you can run with that because you can reach out. We believe in paying it forward. And I've never had a student come back to me to say, well, nobody got back to me. So I think it's just a question of going out there and looking. Um, this is one of the ditto pages because there is some overlap in the partners among the three organizations. Um, in this instance though, actually I didn't see as much overlap as usual. And this is a sampling of some of the companies that are with us right now. We are not going to do Q&A at this particular point. I do want to share an anecdote because I think that um, it is indicative of what we're about and is also, I think, helpful um, to hear about the um, opportunities that are available. Um, I have, uh, I, I do fulfillment for talent management for En-ROADS. And that means when a partner makes a request, I actually do outreach to the candidate pool, find out who's interested, work with the resumes, do coaching with the candidates on interview preparation, submit them, and then do additional work with them on interview preparation. Um, three or four years ago, I was working with one of the big four accounting firms and reached out, got my candidates. Um, actually, I was working on two big four accounting firms. I sent some candidates to one and I sent some candidates to the other. Without getting into all the gory details, um, we had one especially strong standout in that pool from an HBCU, really talented, a um, lot on the ball, stupendous student, um, recipient of all manner of merit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but really, really, really concerned about trying to make this leap into public accounting. She was absolutely committed to being in public accounting, no doubt about that. Um, and it was interesting to watch from my standpoint because she got no leverage at one firm. I mean, zilch. <laughs> they never called, they never reached out, nothing. Our other public accounting partner did reach out to her had her come to, not literally come, but well, yeah, actually she did really go in for an interview. Um, she had met with me several times because she wanted to practice and make sure she was ready. Um, and I thought she was, so off she went. Um, she had a spectacular experience with the company. And I know this because in December of that year, my phone rang one evening and when I answered it, all I could hear was screaming and I, couldn't tell, is this good screaming or is this not so good screaming? So I, I listened more carefully. I was like, I think this is good screaming. So I looked at the number and it's like, oh, I know who this is. So I said, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea, what's, what's going on? And all she could say was, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> right? They loved her. She loved them. She got this internship. It was 
such a huge deal for her family. The screaming was coming from the family members in the background because this was a family excitement moment. And the joy and the pride and the goosebumps were coming through the phone lines. I could not have been happier for her. And I am so happy to report that not only did she intern successfully at this company, I'm not gonna name it, but she interned successfully at the company. She was invited back. She has since converted, is full-time in the public accounting space and being wildly successful. Uh, so I think that is an indication of what could happen through the inroads process. And it's what I absolutely hope for with every candidate I ever meet. So I will stop. And I know Drew has uh, that agenda in terms of perhaps doing some Q&A. So I'm betting the ball back to you. That's a wonderful story. And it shows the, the value of all three of these programs. And I'll just add on before we go to the uh, student uh, student Q&A portion that I've been told I have friends, I, I know other people who have joined either inroads, SEO or MLT, and they're now working in New York or in Boston. And when they're looking for a roommate or they're looking to get plugged into a network, they immediately have access to, you know, you heard 400, 800 other students who are in the same area doing similar things and have the same background. So it automatically kind of helps when you advance into a you know, corporation of any size, you have people at your level who are going through that daily grind that you're going to be going through and to be able to connect and, and have the fellowship of the misery sometimes, to be quite frank, in these, in, in these early positions is more valuable than you know. So with, with that, I will stop recording and I think we will open it up to the uh, students on the call.